Welcome back, got another battery charger to test today and this is the VC2S that's come in from XStar for a review, brand new model out and this is a fully automatic charger, it's been upgraded over the previous versions and it takes quite a wide variety of batteries up to the larger C size and the 26650. As per usual I'm just showing you the box just to give you an idea on the spec. You can see we have a charging speed at up to 2 amps the cable that is included is now micro USB, 80 centimeters in length, and that's the user guide, which I will put up on the screen a bit later on. I'll scan that. So the charger itself looks very similar to the previous model, except they've gone back to the micro USB input instead of the barrel style connector. On the underside, you have six silicone pads, and you can just about see the writing there which gives you another spec just uh, embossed on the back so the build on this is as other X-Star chargers that I've looked at in other words fire retardant materials and it feels well made slot length is around about 72 uh, millimeters and you see there that's one marked for the output slot for the power bank we'll be covering that later on and you've got raised contact points on both sides there. That's for the flat top cell so that they contact properly. Now I'll just power up the screen to show you the display. It's quite a nice colored display they've added to this. And we've also got a lot more information than we have had on the previous model. The viewing angles are pretty good but you can see the blue patches at extreme angles. Probably not a real problem. Now I'll just put a battery in just to show you what you see. So as this is fully automatic it will initially show you the capacity it will count how much goes into the battery so that could be useful if you've uh, fully discharged it then it will show you the uh, current that it's charging the battery at and then the internal resistance so those are the only controls that you have is that center button to cycle through those three readings but on the other hand that is quite useful but we, with the nickel metal hydride cells you have a soft start and that goes around about five minutes and you've also got your zero volt activation you'll notice that the nickel metal hydride flashes for the soft start and that uh, goes to static when it's finished now it does auto dim you can just press the button again after a couple of minutes to bring it back up or fully depress it will turn the backlight off completely but you can still see the display just about you do have a pass-through function which will charge the batteries and also supply power to the USB port. Obviously that will vary depending on the batteries that you're charging or if you're charging any batteries. Now what I found with this is it tends to prefer charging at 18650s at 2 amps. Uh, it doesn't matter which slot you use. Most of the 18650s I put in came in at 2 amp charging. And, but sometimes they'd come up at one amp so it's using the internal resistance to determine how to charge the batteries now that's a pro and a con in some ways I did test out some smaller lithium ion cells and they came out uh, mostly at half an amp charging which is fine smaller cells like this will have higher internal resistance here's a CR123A, a rechargeable again around about the half amp charging so I didn't see any problems there I will get on to the 2 amp charging in a minute that's only 2 amp if you're using 1 by and it will drop down to 1 once you put another cell in a strange thing that I noticed is with the AAA battery here it started off at around about 600 milliamps and then decided that it wanted after it finished the soft start to charge it at 1 amp um, which is on the high side for me because I would prefer to charge them at half an amp so I don't agree with that myself and um, we don't have any way of adjusting that either so that's something to note if you're charging the smaller nickel metal hydride cells didn't see a heat problem but that's more than I'd expect a small lithium ion cell here this is a very unusual size it's a AAA size in lithium that was half an amp but if you're someone who's charging their 21700 batteries then they're absolutely fine charging at higher speeds this battery is mostly charged so it's not putting the full 2 amps into it so with that 2 amp thing I'll go into that in a bit more detail for batteries like the 26650 they're more than happy to be charged at a high charging speed uh, charging these batteries at 2 amps isn't uh, dangerous for them 
Uh, the protected cells have a protection circuit in them anyway, but they're fast charging. So there's uh, consequences of that is that it can reduce the cycle time. Most of the AA batteries were charging at half an amp or one amp, but this lithium ion battery, this is an unprotected cell, it decided after a short period of time it wanted to charge that at one amp as well. So again, I would generally charge a battery like that at half an amp. Just for fun, I put the um, MJ1 battery into the right hand slot and that for some reason went up to 2 amps on the charging even though it was 1 amp so it can vary depending on the internal resistance and I found that the Dragon is more accurate on that side of things. If you want to use the power bank function when you put the battery in you can just push the button and the display will come up it gives you the voltage of the battery that's inserted and the charging speeds on this, I'm charging a phone just under the 1.4 amps, so fairly good. Not as good as a dedicated power bank, but you do get a display which shows you the output of the power bank, the amps. So it didn't quite match up with my USB output uh, tester, but it was close enough to be uh, of some use anyway. So you don't have to worry about over discharging unprotected cells, but if you put an additional cell in, it doesn't make any difference. And I found for some reason, if you take it out of the left slot it still works as a power bank even though they marked that um, initially so not to worry on that sort of thing so the power bank function could be quite handy it is something which I have used quite a few times because I have quite a few batteries around um, and again you can just turn off the display if you want to with that now once it's charged fully charged you'll see that the green comes up and it will start flashing the full and tell you how much it's charged into the battery and you also have the reverse polarity protection on this as well as you would expect for a charger so the termination on the lithium ion batteries I found to be good they were coming in at around about the 4.19 mostly although not always a couple of times I saw it come in a little bit lower 4.17 around that level uh, 4.18 but anything above 4.15 is satisfactory up to 4.2 and nickel metal hydride mostly was charging fine around about the 1.5 volts but I did see a couple of cells come off a bit undercharged and this was one of them here 1.43 but then another cell came off at 1.5 so a few areas they could improve on the nickel metal hydride charging it's not quite as good as the lithium ion quick look at the user guide very basic and simple just to give you an overview of the uh, features that I've talked about. I think it's worth having a quick discussion about some charging speeds on the 18650 batteries. You'll see I've got a couple on screen here and they're recommending a charging speed of 1 amp with a maximum of 2 amps. So it's not unsafe to use the 2 amp charging for a single battery. You can see here some batteries will accept a much larger charge this particular LG one you can charge up to a whopping four amps but that will degrade the battery life so the rule of thumb really is going to be if it's a high drain cell it will take a faster charge as opposed to the protected cells which I would normally charge them at around about one amp you can charge them at two amps but you're going to shorten the cycle life on those batteries so that's one reason why I would have liked manual control on this charger. You could put another battery in there to compensate for that so it drops the charging rate. I mean some of the batteries are quite happy to accept a fast charge. You're just going to get less cycle timers out of them. And when I spoke to Extra about this, they seem to be prioritizing fast charging. But my view is it would be better to let the user decide. Just add a couple of buttons on the charger and then you can manually select the charging rate rather than relying on the internal resistance to determine the charge speed. Another option would have been to take the right hand slot at maximum one amp so you could just put a single cell in there. So those are my thoughts on the VC2S. To be honest I am a little disappointed in some ways particularly with the lack of manual control. I've put my complete list of pros and cons up there on the screen for you. There are some good things with this, the fast charging if you want to use it, the display is much more useful and it works quite well as a power bank. I'm also a little bit surprised that you can't take the protected 20 or 21700 batteries because they're becoming more popular and I expect them to become more popular over time so that's something else to bear in mind. So that's my honest assessment on the X-Star 
personally think it could have been a little bit better but it might be worth looking at if you're into fast charging or particularly if you're into vaping.